Hello and welcome back to Happy Tabernacle. Grady G here. You're listening to the most important radio broadcast you'll ever listen to, where we talk about exposing evil and expressing the truth. And today we're going to talk about and kind of do a little crash course, just a quick little segment here about uh, this new article I posted on happytabernacle.wordpress.com, which was about a biblical concept that's often skipped over and often interpreted Uh, as uh you know subjective or theoretical when in reality we know it's very lytical by the power of jesus christ's method or uh sorry jesus christ's message in his book the holy bible so open your bibles to genesis chapter 6 which is often jumped over because i have found and this might just be me But I've found that when Christians open their Bible and start reading through it cover to cover uh, in Genesis, they've just started reading the Bible. They're not necessarily aware of, you know, the historical context that comes along with Genesis and the creation story. They're not necessarily aware of other books and Christian and Jewish writings from the time that were not included in the Bible. And uh, Genesis 6 might seem like something they don't necessarily understand immediately, and they jump right over it. So if you're new to the Bible, this will cater to you as I explain it in layman's terms. And if you're a Bible scholar, I trust that you've come to the same conclusions. So we start off at Genesis chapter 6. Now it came to pass, when man began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves, all of whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be one hundred and twenty years." There were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterwards, when the sons of God came in to the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of this heart was only evil continually, and the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth. So hold on a second. I thought that... Noah's Ark and the great flood of the earth was because of sin. However, that's not what the text says, because the text says that the sons of God and the daughters of men were reproducing, and that this was the inherent evil that actually pushed God, the creator of the earth and the creator of everything on it, to actually destroy and wipe out everything. So in the beginning of that passage, It said the sons of God saw the daughters of men and that they were beautiful. Who were the sons of God? Well, in the Bible, in um, Job, God talked about this. He talked about uh, the sons of God in a context that they were Satan's angels. They were once holy angels and they fell. So the sons of God in the Bible was actually translated to the fallen one. And the fallen ones, if you read the book of Enoch, which is a, um, a text that was written in the same chronological pattern as the Holy Bible. However, it, the manuscript of Enoch was not included in the Bible. Just a quick little uh, side note here. The Bible was actually constructed and compiled by a group of scholars that actually chose what was actually, you know, uh, inspired by God and prophetic And uh, so lots of early Christian and Jewish writings are also mentioned in the Bible, but uh, they're not necessarily included in the Bible. So we would say they're non-canon, but they are truth. And we know the book of Enoch is truth, Enoch, Jubilee, and Jasher, because all their stories are corroborated in the actual Holy Bible itself. So for this article, we leaned heavily into the book of Enoch. Uh, and we did also read through the book of Jubilee and the book of Jasher, and I would love to do studies of that on this channel if that's something you'd be interested in, but it might just be me babbling on for a very long time about something you don't care about. So, sorry, anyway. Uh, where was I? Oh, yes, yes. Talking about the book of Enoch at the beginning, we see the sons of God. They're angels that God has instructed to watch over creation on the earth and to watch over the human race and all of God's creation. So, uh... 
we see that these angels, they all have names, which I include in the article. We see that these angels actually decide that they're going to betray God and they're going to start looking for women and reproducing because they think the women are absolutely beautiful, uh, the human women. And we know that fallen angels, angels do have the ability to shapeshift into anything they want. So it wouldn't have been difficult for them to actually get with uh, the women. I see a lot of people online going, no, we could never have uh, angels with women, with human women. Human women would be interested in some huge giant. No, they weren't necessarily huge giants. The giants were their offspring or the Nephilim. So the angels convince and persuade the humans to marry them and they reproduce. This is something that just made God very angry because this was not something he was interested in. So... The Nephilim were a breed, a crossbreed of humans and angels. They were completely evil. The Book of Enoch talked about them, named them all by name, and said that they introduced things to the earth like sorcery, astrology, um, genetic mutation, all sorts of evil. Sorry, let me turn that off. All sorts of evil, evil things that are absolutely unacceptable on God's creation in his eyes, things he taught against and things he had no interest in humans knowing, secrets of the heavens that we were never supposed to know, but we did. So I kind of just went off on a tangent there. I apologize. However, uh, where was I? The thing about the Nephilim is they were titans. They were demigods, I guess you could call them. And, uh, Greek mythology, Roman mythology, you know, Zeus and Hades and all sorts of uh, these mythological gods, they weren't made up. They're in so many early writings because they did exist. However, they were not gods that descended. They were actually offsprings of angels and humans from the times of Noah. So we always talk about Noah's flood. We always talk about when God flooded the whole earth because of sin. However, what we don't ever talk about is that this sin was not just the sins of the humans, but it was the sins of the heavens as well. So we've seen that uh, a lot of people aren't going to dig too deep into the Bible to find this stuff out, which just shows us that we're allowing the establishment to get away with this huge cover up, which is the Nephilim were on earth and they still are. This, this passage actually went on to say that there were giants on the earth in those days and after. So, and after, how could they have survived the flood? Which is something that not a lot of people cover. However, in my article on Happy Tabernacle, I did cover that because we did actually trace the bloodline of Noah because we know Noah and his family were the only people that were allowed on the ark. And the reason God chose Noah to even be the one to build the ark and to preserve life on earth was because his blood was clean and God knew his blood was clean. So how did the uh, blood survive? I guess we could say, well, there's a few different theories on that. Some people believe in multiple incursions of angels coming down from heaven and mating with humans. We absolutely call that blasphemy against the Holy Spirit here on Happy Tabernacle. We don't believe that's what happened, and we will never encourage you to believe that's what happened. We know that there was a lot of genetic mutation in place before the flood, because after these Nephilim were on the earth, we have about 300 years before, uh, you know, before the flood actually happened. The Nephilim were consistently working on genetic mutation, crossbreeding animals, bestiality. Why were they doing this? Have you ever seen, you know, ancient mythology about centaurs and fawns and, you know, half horse, half human hybrids? We see that all throughout mythology. People can't even understand where that comes from because most mythology is actually based on fact. So what were we thinking? There was actually half horse, half humans on the earth? That's possible. And the Bible actually corroborates that through saying that the Nephilim did genetic mutation. If we can have half angel, half humans, why can't we have half human, half horse? So that's just some food for thought. We think about the superhero media today, how these demigods and Thor and, you know, Captain America and all these genetic hybrids are absolutely, uh, you know, glorified and showed to be heroes. That's because... That's actually how the world and society viewed the Nephilim back in the day. They were actually heroes and they were, you know, strong titans and people look up to them. Similar how our society looks up to superheroes, which is, again, just conditioning and Satan's plan to tempt us. 
So Jesus said it'll be just like the days of Noah when he returns. So what does that mean? There's going to be Nephilim on the earth again? Well, we know that there's Nephilim on the earth now because the Bible says so. They said there were giants in these days and after giants did survive the flood through the bloodline. We talk about it in the article. However, the most important thing to know is that transhumanism we talk about on the website sometimes is not a thing of the future. Transhumanism began in the past. This has been Satan's goals forever. Because when you modify part of the holy temple, which is what the Bible calls our bodies, temples of the Holy Spirit, when you modify that, you actually, you know, take away a space that the Holy Spirit can inhabit and live with you, and you open it up to evil spirits, which is what happened when the sons of God or the fallen angels were destroyed. Uh, we actually know, and the book of Enoch talks about it, and the Bible talks about it, that their spirits left their bodies, their bodies are, were destroyed, and they're evil spirits now, and they're demons that will inhabit the earth. So all these evil spirits, paranormal activity, things like that, we always talk about how CERN and things like that actually attract them. The spirits were actually here because they were fallen angels. So this has just been a food for thought. I just wanted you guys to know that the Bible really does talk about these otherworldly experiences more than some would like you to think. People say, you're a conspiracy theorist. You're, you don't know what you're talking about. However, if we do believe that the Bible is true and the Bible talks about this, what did you think? Goliath was the only giant that ever existed? What did you think? That David had five stones for one giant? That wasn't the case, and, uh, you know, there's just a lot of information in the Bible that we could really use and would actually uh, help us out. So you've been listening to Happy Tabernacle. This is the best radio show in the world where we talk about truth and we expose evil. God bless you for watching, and I really do just want to pray for you guys and pray that you would uncover the truths of this book before it's too late, because we really do believe that the end times are near. So Heavenly Father... I come to you today to pray for myself and all the people around me that have been deeply touched by your word, because we know your word is truth, and we try to live by your word, and we respect your word, and your word says that you're coming again, God. And we accept this, and we honor this, and we look forward to this. So I pray that you would bless the ones that are trying to live by your teachings. I pray that you would convict the ones that keep walking away from you and show them that your love is the only love that they will ever need. And if they find it, I pray that they never look back and they never turn back, God, because time is running short. Your prophecies are coming true. We love you, God. We confess to you. We abide in you, God. And we pray that you would bless us and all around us and allow us to do your work through us. In Jesus' name, amen. And thank you guys for watching, and please subscribe to the channel and check out happytabernacle.wordpress.com. Goodbye. In case you haven't heard, Happy Tabernacle is the newest reliable information source on the internet. We are closely watching the signs of the end times and the fulfillment of biblical prophecies. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and check out our information on happytabernacle.wordpress.com. We are fighting the globalists together.